This is Power Play, where I try to beat classic Nintendo games using only the tips and tricks in Nintendo Power. Once I start a game, I have seven days to beat it, a two-hour session each day for a total of 14 hours played. Whether credits roll or time runs out, the results will determine just how useful Nintendo Power actually was. After a pretty easy clear of The Legend of Zelda, it's time to switch gears. Today's challenge is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, released in North America in October 1987. The NES Punch-Out we know and love is actually the third entry in the series, following two arcade games, Punch-Out and Super Punch-Out, both released in 1984. The first arcade Punch-Out was also the first project for Koji Kondo the composer who would eventually build the music for games like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. Punch-Out! was notable in arcades for its massive character sprites, full of expressive cartoonish detail, and the home release follows suit. You play as Little Mac, a street fighter looking to make it big as a pro boxer under Doc Lewis, a washed-up former champ turned coach the classic boxing story. I certainly played some Punch-Out! as a kid, but it never quite captured my imagination the way the more open-ended adventure games on NES did. As a result, I have no idea how this challenge is going to go. My knowledge of the game drops off somewhere around the halfway point, and the final bosses, including Mike Tyson himself, are legendary examples of how unforgiving NES games could be. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! first appears in the official Nintendo Player's Guide, then four times in Nintendo Power proper, once in the Counselor's Corner and three times in Classified Info. Just plain Punch-Out!, where Tyson is replaced by the fictional stand-in, Mr. Dream, also makes an appearance in the Top Secret Passwords Guide. Punch-Out! is basically a timing game. You can't move around the ring, so you have to watch your opponents, dodge their attacks, and respond with an appropriate follow-up. Several of them have specific tricks, but mostly it's a matter of playing until you get the timing right. Which means the utility of Nintendo Power is going to be limited this time around. I start in the minor circuit, ranked number three and ready to take on Glass Joe a French fighter with a 1 in 99 record. This fight is basically a tutorial before tutorials really existed. You can punch left and right, and aim those blows either at the body or the head. You and your opponent both have stamina meters, and when one of those meters empties out, that fighter hits the mat. There are three three-minute rounds, and if you get knocked down three times in the round, that's a TKO. So. You know, boxing. Joe's got big, predictable punches and not much defense. Getting strikes in during specific windows will net you a star, which you can use for a super damaging uppercut. In basically every fight, including this one, you try to dodge your opponent's biggest moves, which leaves them vulnerable to a combo of punches or an uppercut. I take a bit of extra time re-familiarizing myself with the controls, but Joe goes down via KO in round three. Next up is the number one ranked Von Kaiser, a 23 and 13 fighter from Berlin. He's got a quick jab that comes out much faster than anything Joe had, as well as a bigger hook, but we're still in the easy bits here. Von Kaiser goes down via TKO in round one. That takes me to the number one ranking and the minor circuit title bout against the 26 and 1 Piston Honda. And yeah, these sorts of gentle cultural caricatures are going to continue to be a thing throughout Punch Out. Honda mostly has the same combination of quick jabs and longer hooks as Von Kaiser, but he's got a special signature move too the Piston Punch. This flurry of jabs comes out too quickly to effectively dodge, so you have to block them. Many of the fighters to come have specific moves with little tricks like this, 
and the early ones are all broken down in the official Nintendo Player's Guide. Honda goes down via KO in round two, which nets me the minor circuit title and a fantastic little training scene, as well as a pass key I can enter to continue my progress. Now it's time to take on the major circuit, starting with the number three ranked Don Flamenco, with a 22 and three record. Flamenco is a flashy fighter. He'll taunt you. The trick is to take the bait, then dodge when he makes his follow-up strike. He stays stunned to take a long combo, and goes down three times for a TKO in round one. Next is the number two ranked King Hippo, with his 18 and nine record. Hippo's basically a puzzle boss. It's a tight window, but you have to punch him in the face when he winds up his own strike. That makes him vulnerable to a flurry of punches to the stomach. This is my first run-in with the stamina system. The hearts in the upper left represent your stamina, and each time a punch gets blocked or you take a hit, your stamina goes down. Once you hit zero, Little Mac gets fatigued. You have to dodge a series of attacks to get out of this state, but the dodge controls are much more sluggish. Either way, Hippo is easy enough that this isn't much of an issue right now. Once he goes down, he doesn't get back up. It's a first round knockout. Next is the number one ranked Great Tiger, 24 and five. His special is the Tiger Magic Punch, which sends him teleporting around the ring for a series of fast jabs. But it's basically the same as Honda's Piston Punch. Just block all the attacks, then deliver a follow-up. A second round TKO. Time for the title bout, against the 34 and 4 champion Bald Bull. Bull is the first genuinely challenging opponent. His jabs and hooks come out so fast that even when you know the tells, the timing is still tough. Then there's his charge. You can't block it, but you can time a punch just so to knock him down right as he's rushing you. I can't get the timing right. I go down to two charges in the first round, then take a hook to go down again in the second. Even though that's not technically a TKO, Little Mac usually can't survive three knockdowns in one fight. This is my first loss. My ranking dropped, so I've got to face Great Tiger again before the title rematch. Another round two TKO. Now it's back to Bald Bull. In round one, I take him down early. Here comes the charge. And finally, I get the timing right. And I get it a second time. A round one TKO and a quick redemption for the Major Circuit Championship. A quick break for some nighttime training and it's off to the World Circuit. I'm only 30 minutes in and I'm in the final championship gauntlet before Mike Tyson. Hey, maybe I'll finish this thing on the first day of the challenge. That's the kind of hubris that undoes you. The World Circuit features a lot of rematches against previous opponents, but everyone's faster and tougher. I just managed to get by Honda again with a win by decision, which is determined by reaching a certain score threshold at the end of round three. I just barely managed to scrape by with Honda, and now it's time to face the 33 and two Soda Popinski. His original name of Vodka Drunkinski was dropped from the NES release, though his between-match dialogue bits still make heavy reference to alcohol. And weirdly, the story write-up in the player's guide gives Doc Lewis a drinking problem too. I guess Punch-Out takes place in a world where sodas are alcoholic. I get into a good rhythm with Popinski early, but I can't keep it going. I'm hurting by the start of round two, which means I've got to start making use of the stamina trick. In the player's guide, the select button is marked with this advice. If pressed between rounds, Doc's encouraging advice can increase. That means you can get health back if you mash select, though you can only do it once per fight. Either way, it's not enough. I'm out in round two. The rematch doesn't go much better. 
I'm knocked out in round two again and hit my first game over. Luckily, I can continue from the start of the world circuit with the rematch against Honda. Once I get back to Popinski, I'm finally starting to get it right. It drags out until round three, but I finally win via TKO. Next is a bald bull rematch. He's much faster now, and I've completely lost the timing for the bull rush. I go down in round one. I lose the rematch in the exact same way. The early World Circuit matches aren't getting much easier either. I take more losses against Popinski, and even when I can manage to get back to Bull, those charges are wrecking me every time. I'm getting better at dodging his regular punches, but it's not enough when I go down every single time to his charge. To make this version of Bull even tougher, you can't knock him down with regular punches. He'll only hit the mat if you interrupt the charge, or take his stamina down with an uppercut. So not only do you have to hit him at the opportune moment to earn a star, you've got to dodge every single one of his punches long enough to actually use that star when his stamina is low. After spending a full hour in game over hell against Bull, I try something different against his charge. Rather than standing up against it, I dodge it. He does something different. He starts charging again, but this time it's a short one, then a long one, and another short. He won't stop. I get just enough time to figure out the rhythm and... finally. A blow to the gut and he hits the mat. I get him again in round two, but he won't stay down. I've run out of time on day one, but there's a glimmer of hope. I can do something about that charge. On the first run of day two, I managed to go the distance with Bull. He spends the last two minutes of round three just charging over and over again. They're only long charges though, and I've only gotten the timing to counter the short charge. I run out of time, and I don't have the points to win the decision. Then, finally, in round three of the rematch. Bull stays down. Compared to Bull, the rematch against Don Flamenco is easy. It's tougher to bait him out after the taunts now, but he goes for a full assault in round three that's fairly simple to counter. A TKO victory in the first match. Next is the number one ranked Mr. Sandman, with a 27-2 record. He's faster and tougher than any opponent I've yet fought. His jabs are absurdly fast, and while his hooks are easier to dodge, they deal massive damage. I can get past the hooks and counter with a face shot ahead of a series of body blows pretty consistently. But this? This attack is a problem. After a long pause to throw you off rhythm, Sandman flashes so briefly that half the time my capture card won't even pick it up. Then he delivers a series of three giant uppercuts. Rapidly dodging those three attacks is key to surviving this fight, but that's much easier said than done. I'm knocked out in round two. Worse yet, I still don't have a checkpoint. Sometimes I get a rematch. The constraints of the system aren't clear. But every time I lose to Sandman, I have to go back through the gauntlet of Honda, Popinski, Bull, and Flamenco. And while those earlier fights are getting easier, I'm still not winning them 100% of the time. It takes nearly an hour before I get my first rematch against Sandman. It goes even worse than the first match. The jabs are just too fast for me to dodge consistently, so I start blocking them instead. It's going to be tough to manage my stamina doing that, but it's better than taking the hits. It's getting easier now, but I'm still making too many mistakes. On the third rematch though, a spark of hope. I finally manage to dodge the triple uppercut. That leaves Sandman stunned for a long flurry that cuts his stamina hard. It's what I need. I take out Sandman by TKO in round two. But the World Circuit Gauntlet isn't over yet. I still have to win the title bout against the undefeated Super Macho Man.
impeccable. It goes all right at the start. I even managed to dodge his special attack multiple times in the first round. But then, it's the variant version of his special. He quickly flashes, then does multiple spinning punches in a row. It's too much for me. A first round TKO. In theory, I'm supposed to restart the entire world circuit from here. I still haven't gotten the passkey from the game. But the Top Secret Passwords Guide has a code that'll take you right back to the Super Macho Man fight. I've never been more thankful for a Nintendo tip than this. I last around two in the first rematch, but I still can't get past the big windmill attack. Second rematch. Third rematch. Fourth rematch. I wonder if I can block the special. Well. Then, in the fifth rematch. I still ultimately lose this one, but I can completely dodge that spinning flurry. I've run out of time for day two of the challenge, but there's hope going into day three. It takes some time to get my rhythm back on day three, but within about 10 minutes, a round one TKO, just seconds from the bell. The World Circuit Challenge is over. Little Mac and I have won every championship there is. Now, it's time for the dream fight. Let's just see how this first round plays out. Yes, each of those shots is an instant knockout. Can I block? I cannot block. The rematch does not go better. I've had several bouts with Tyson. However, I have never beaten him. Please help. I want to win the dream bout. This single counselor's corner entry is the biggest spot Nintendo Power gave to punch out strategies. The hint, basically, is to get good. Those dynamite punches keep coming out, non-stop, for the first 90 seconds of the match. There's nothing you can do except dodge in an effort to survive. Then, and only then, do you get a fighting chance against someone who's still the toughest opponent in the entire game. It's back to game over hell from here. And Punch-Out has one more cruel trick to play, too. Unlike previous pass keys, this one disappears from the start screen every time you get a game over. You have to put in all 10 digits every time. 007-373-5963 Over and over and over again. You cannot predict the dynamite punches. You have to react instantaneously to the tell every time. If you dodge too early, you will be knocked down. The real problem is that they don't come out at a consistent rhythm. Every so often, there's a pause just long enough to completely throw off my timing. Game over hell. Then, in the 21st match against Tyson, I survive the first 90 seconds. I still lose, but once again, there's hope. In the 25th match, I make it as far as round two before getting knocked out. I've gotten a late start on this session, and I can feel myself getting far too tired to keep up the reflexes necessary for the fight. I've got to cut this one short. Session 3 ends after just one hour, but there's a glimmer of possibility for Day 4.
On day four, I spend two straight hours getting beaten over and over. I lose to Tyson 48 more times in this one session. But towards the end of day four, this happens. I make it to the end of round three and force the match to go to the judges. The condition for a decision is 5,000 points. I'm nowhere near that, but I can go the distance and I can send Tyson to the mat. I just have to make fewer mistakes getting there. We're into day five now, but there's no reprieve from Game Over Hell. The Dynamite Punch Flurry is still taking me out in round one more often than not. And even when I can make it to rounds two and three, I can't play consistently enough to put Tyson down. Then, an hour into this session, there's a minute left in round three. I knock Tyson down and I've got a score of 4,630 points. I might, might have just enough time to score the last few hundred points I need for the decision before time runs out. I panic. That's the best run I get for most of day five. I'm running out of time. I feel like I can do it, but it's just a matter of being able to consistently focus. I feel like I'm looking for a bit of luck within my own mind. I just need a few minutes without a stray thought popping into my head. If you think, you lose. And as I reach one hour and 50 minutes into day five, I'm thinking a lot about how little time I have left. Then this happens. Five thousand points. A minute and a half left in round three. If I survive, I can win the decision. I just have to not panic. That's it! I've done it! I've beaten Mike Tyson. Me and my, uh, finger speed have defeated Punch-Out. Since I've used passwords, the win-loss record isn't exactly accurate. Let's update it to my stat just before facing Tyson. And here it is after facing Tyson. Well, at least I won. A few years after the original release of Punch-Out, Nintendo's license with Tyson ran out and a second run of the game replaced him with the fictional Mr. Dream. Immediately after beating Tyson, I took a shot at Mr. Dream just to gather some footage for this video. And I beat him in two attempts. Maybe I actually got good at Punch-Out? Nintendo Power was essential in providing passwords, but the tips maybe left more to be desired. Either way, it did at least help, so that's a positive. But after defeating a pair of all-time classics with Zelda and Punch-Out, the third challenge is going to take me to some less beloved frontiers, with a third-party game that Nintendo Power barely even bothered to cover. Next time, it's Capcom's Commando. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you then.